the background that I'm going to talk about is a story about what Jesus said in the scriptures in John 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. So I'm interactive, guys, so please feel free to just talk to me, okay? This passage of scripture helps us visualize the connection or the close relationship that Jesus had with his disciples. So I want to ask you something right at out the outset. How is your relationship with Jesus this morning? How is your relationship with Jesus this morning? How are your relationships at home this morning? How are your relationships with other people? Are you carrying any hatred or jealousy or you have vindictive, revengeful or mean thoughts in your hearts this morning? If you do, Jesus can help you turn things around. Because Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus said, Stay joined to me and let my teachings become part of you. That's how things can change around. The two things. He said, Join, stay joined to me and let my teachings become a part of you. You know, friends, to all relationships in life, there comes the inevitable crisis. Someone is offended. Attitudes change quickly. Inappropriate words and actions soon follow. The relationship is strained and at times even ended. <clears throat> unless, of course, unless you, you live by yourself on a remote island, it can be Sri Lanka, okay? You know all too well the pain of a broken relationship, don't you? In John chapter 15, Jesus had a heart-to-heart -heart chat with his disciples one day, and that's what I want to focus on this morning. In John chapter 15, verse 9, it says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. It says, continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall, now look at that word, how many times it appears in that one verse. You shall abide in my love, even as I have uh, kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Three times it says in John, how they remain in love, abide in love, all that is there in one little verse, in verse 9. Verse 11 it says, I have told you these things so that, why? So that your joy may be uh, fulfilled. I, I have a different little translation. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. And yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment, Jesus said. Love each other. How? In the same way that I have loved you. There's a little catch there. Love each other as I have loved you. And then Jesus, by having a chat with his disciples, says, said something wonderful. He says in verse 14, you're my hired servants. Did he say that? He says, you're my friends. Now that's something different too. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves now you are my friend since I have told you everything the father told me. You didn't choose me. And he says, in, in, for the down, it says, I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit. And last of all, he said, this is my command. It's not multiple choice. It's a command. So my friends, let's, that's the passage of scripture I want to talk to you about this morning, okay? First of all, Jesus was having a heart-to-heart -heart chat with his disciples. In other words, he had a relationship with his disciples. You agree with that? Okay. So in a relationship, in a relationship, you want the other person to encourage you. 
And in a relationship, you want others to listen to you. In a relationship, you want people to understand you. And in a relationship, you want others to forgive you. And in a relationship, you want people to appreciate you. That's what a happy marriage is about also, right? And last of all, you want them to love you unconditionally. Unconditionally. Now, if you, if you love someone unconditionally, you focus on meeting the, meeting the needs of the other person, not your needs. Helping them succeed. You listen, you listen to their thoughts and also their feelings. That's how it happens in a relationship. In short, it is giving your life away for someone else. Giving your life away for someone else. We were singing these wonderful, beautiful hymns and songs this morning on the screen. We sing those in our church too. I'm very familiar with that. So here we find... Uh, the scriptures today, that is precisely, that is precisely what Jesus did for us. Jesus said, love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. I want to ask you a little thing this morning. When was the last time you heard the words somebody told you? Last, when was the last time you heard these words? I love you. When was the last time you heard those words? I love you. Friends, in every human heart, in every human heart, there's a yearning. There's a longing to hear those words somebody say, I love you. When was the last time your child heard those words? When was the last time you touched your child and said, Puta, I love you, darling? Or you went to your parents and said, Ammi or Tati, I love you. When was, that, when was that time? Because you know why? I grew up like a weed, you know. Nobody said those words to me except my grandmother. I praised God for her. And that's, that is not something that is there in our culture in the first place. But also, learn to tell somebody, I love you. If you love somebody, as I told you, unconditionally, it's giving your life away for somebody else. Friends, we live in a world, as I said, where people are just waiting, yearning, to have a touch from a human hand. Just to hear those words that somebody loves you, somebody cares for you. Different Bible translations use different words to describe the relationship or the connection between Jesus and us believers, between God and his children. And I want you to understand these words. Different translations say, abide in me, remain in me, live in me, stay connected to me. That's what it says in this passage of scripture that I just showed you in John chapter 15, verses 9 through 16. So what does it mean to you to remain in Christ's love? What does it mean to you? How does his love influence our lives? Or how does it shape our interactions with other people? We always say, yeah, I love you, I love Jesus. You sang all these wonderful, beautiful songs. But does it end there after this service? Or does it continue to go into the world? That's a question that you have to answer. The word remain is not passive, but it is active. It implies a continuous, ongoing action. This is not a one-sided effort also. This is a reciprocal relationship. Just as we desire for Christ to abide in us, we must have a desire to abide in him. Now, Jesus is not saying that we earn his love by keeping his commandments. Rather, he's saying that our obedience to his commands is a natural outgrowth 
of our remaining in his love. As we remain in his love, we find ourselves naturally desiring to keep his commandments. That's how it happens. It is a description of a life that is shaped by divine love. A life that is guided by the commands of Jesus. A life that is not driven by selfish desires, but selfless love. Now, when people hear the words commands, then people get very upset of that word commands. But I want to remind you, friends, the commands of Jesus are not burdensome rules. They are liberating truths right here. They are not restrictive laws, but life-giving principles. Jesus didn't have to love us. He didn't have to. But you know what? He chose to. Did you see that? He chose to live among us, to suffer and die for us. That was a choice. And it was a choice motivated by love. So my friend, remember also, you chose to love your husband. You chose to love your wife, did you? Did you? No? Yes, of course. You chose to do that, just like Jesus did. Jesus didn't just choose or he, uh, to love us. He chose you and me for a purpose. He says, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. We are not just recipients of his love. We are also carriers of that love into the world. That's what this is about. Telling somebody about Jesus, give share in the good news. We are called also to bear fruit, to live lives that reflect that love, to make a difference in our homes and in our relationships. So when we remain in his love, we also have access to his resources. That is very true. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, my father will do what? Give you. This is not a blank check for our selfish desires. No. But a promise to provide our needs as we seek to fulfill the purpose for which we have been chosen. So my brothers and sisters, the ultimate goal of our connection with Christ is that his joy may be in us and that our joy might overflow. Have you seen joyful Christians around you? Have you seen those people that, uh, that spread the joy of Jesus or grumpy faces or complaining and grumbling for every little thing that happens? Jesus says that the ultimate goal according to the scripture of our connection with Jesus Christ is that his joy may be in us and that our joy will overflow. This love, this love we are talking about when fully embraced and experienced has the power to transform us. It will change your heart. It will renew your mind and it will reshape your life. This love demonstrated by Christ is not exclusive or selective. It is not a love that is reserved for a select few or privileged groups, no. It is a love that is available to all people, regardless of race, gender, or social status, or religious affiliation. A love that is inclusive, welcoming, and accepting. A love that embraces all people, includes all, and accepts all. And also, as the scriptures say, a love that is patient and kind, not easily angered or quick, to judge, a love that keeps no record of wrongs or hold grudges. Finally, it is a love that is willing to sacrifice, willing to give. It is a love that is willing to go the extra mile, turn the other cheek, and give without expecting anything in return. That's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about. 
In 1 John 3.16, the scriptures tell us this. We know what love is because Jesus gave his life for us. This is why we must give our lives for each other. If we all, if we have all we need and see one of our own people in need, we must have pity on that person. Or else we cannot say we love God. And he said this, children, you show love for others by truly helping them and not merely talking about it. Children, you show love for others by truly helping them and not merely talking about it. And it's an amazing thing, amazing statement of, you know, being in an Episcopal church where I come from, the Church of the Holy Apostles, what they do, and the last part of the, our mission statement is love in action, and what they do to help people, groups, not only in the U.S., but other places like Honduras or Guatemala or Uganda, uh, El Salvador, any place. I mean, what they do is amazing. Uh, I really thank God for our church there because something is like this. And we can, I can easily relate to that. Friends, re remember that we are chosen by Christ out of his great love for us. It's not about what we have done or what we can do, but it's all about God's grace and God's mercy. He calls us not just servants, but friends. That's a relationship that's personal, intimate, and enduring. So today I invite you, brothers and sisters, to be his hands and feet, serving those in need. I encourage you to be his voice, sharing the good news of his love and salvation. I pray that you will become a vessel through which he, his love flows touching and transforming the life of those around you. You know, you know that passage in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. Have you seen that? We all know that passage. For if we don't love people, we can see how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. There's no choice. Now, normally, uh, when we have little children in our homes, babies, have you done this? I have done that. Put that, show me how much you love me. And the kids go, how? This much? that much and he say well, how much do you say how do you say that we say I love you this much and you put your hands like that right that's what Jesus did Jesus on the cross said this is how much I love you that is shown on the cross what I'm talking to you about is that uh, the conversation that Jesus had in John 15 with his disciples, one on one, one on one, he had a chat with them because he had a relationship with them. That's what I asked you. He wants to have a relationship with, this, with you this morning as well. And he says, I, I love you. If Jesus says, I love you, maybe you have never heard those words from anybody, but he tells you, he calls you and says, if he says, I love you, how powerful that would be inside your heart. As I told you, I grew up like a little child. I lost my dad when I was 11 years old. Nobody cared for me. But my grandmother, she's the one who showed me that love. And you see that love in our home today. We see that love in our church today. And I'm sure you had that same love in your church as well. So, Jesus says to you, if you are a person who's hurting this morning, if you are a person who thinks that nobody cares for me anymore, if you are a single parent, if you are a divorced person, if you are thinking of whatever you are thinking in your mind, in your heart, little head this morning, Jesus says, wait a minute. 
I love you. I love you and I care for you. You are my friend. You're my friend. And I died for you. I died for you. Jesus died for you. Will you? Will you live for him? Jesus died for you. Will you live for him? You know, we have a beautiful prayer that we pray every Sunday in our church after the Eucharist in the Episcopal Church. And I want to share that with you. Maybe you want to say this prayer with me. I don't know how you feel about it. If you like to, you can repeat after me. It says, Jesus, send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ our Lord. You like that? Brothers and sisters, what a joy it is to share uh, this passage of scripture. This is the message God gave me to share with you. To share with you the love of Jesus, what this means and what John meant by saying about the vine and the branches. And so I shared that with you. So I want you just to go, when you go outside this church, it's always good to have a little tune going through your little head. Of course, in your heart, right? So I'm sure sometimes it's good to, good to be little children. At times, actually, uh, to become like little children in our worship, it's a blessing. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Oh, down in my heart, I've got the joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart to stay. Oh, I'm so happy, so very happy. What do you got? I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Oh, I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the peace that passeth understanding. Down in my heart, oh, down in my heart, I've got the peace that passes understanding. My heart down in my heart to stay. Oh, I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Oh, I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Under God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may his blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.